introduced to you centers for her, a mobile application that links girls and women who experience violence to the various support services, including sexual reproductive health services. With the Centers for Her app, girls and women can now access free, fast and confidential post-violence services. These include emergency shelter, police stations, legal aid, counseling, toll-free helplines, health facilities and services like HIV and AIDS post-exposure prophylaxis, emergency family planning pills if reported within 72 hours, treatment of STDs and other injuries, among others. Centers for Her app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. To access any of the services, for example, police stations, tap on the Categories option, choose Police, select a station closest to your location. This will be represented by a black pin. You will then get directions to the center. Centers for Her is an app that women, girls, community leaders, and service providers can all use to refer survivors of violence to different service points. Hello, my name is Wamboga Teridon. I'm happy to introduce to you Centers for Her, a mobile application that links girls and women who experience violence to the various support services, including sexual reproductive health services. With the Centers for Her app, girls and women can now access free, fast and confidential post-violence services. These include emergency shelter, police stations, legal aid, counseling, toll-free helplines, health facilities and services like HIV and AIDS post-exposure prophylaxis, emergency family planning pills if reported within 72 hours, treatment of STDs and other injuries, among others. Centers for Her app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. To access any of the services, for example, police stations, tap on the Categories option, choose Police, select a station closest to your location, this will be represented by a black pin. You will then get directions to the center. Centers for Her is an app that women, girls, community leaders, and service providers can all use to refer survivors of violence to different service points. Hello, my name is Wamboga Teridon. I'm happy to introduce to you Centers for Her, a mobile application that links girls and women who experience violence to the various support services, including sexual reproductive health services. With the Centers for Her app, girls and women can now access free, fast and confidential post-violence services. These include emergency shelter, police stations, legal aid, counseling, toll-free helplines, health facilities and services like HIV and AIDS post-exposure prophylaxis, emergency family planning pills if reported within 72 hours, treatment of STDs and other injuries, among others. Centers for Her app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. To access any of the services, for example, police stations, tap on the Categories option, choose Police, select a station closest to your location, this will be represented by a black pin. You will then get directions to the center. Centers for Her is an app that women, girls, community leaders, and service providers can all use to refer survivors of violence to different service points. Good afternoon, all of viewers. Welcome back to S Class. Remember, S Class social media show that runs every, every day that we get to do any kind of program that help young to engage young people and also educate young people in Uganda and also other parts of the country, of the world. Then today on this case we're going to discuss a very sensitive topic or an interesting topic which is young people into leadership. Why are young people now interested in true leadership in every country of the world? When you look at USA, however like the ones who are standing in a little bit old, but we have gov young governors. When you look at different countries in Uganda, in, in Africa, the young people are also interested in true leadership. When you look at now in Uganda, our country, Uganda, very many young people are coming up to stand in as, in, as presidents, as LC1 chairmen, as youth leaders, and also when you look at the MPs, the majority of, of them are young people or that they want to change something. So what has been, what has been not happening before? Why are they so much interested in tool leadership, which was not happening before? So t today on the panel, we have Delik, a doctor and also a politician. Then we have Lowell, 
a politician then you have mr simple a teacher so we are going to start from my right hand side so we are going to start with Derek. Derek, first of all give us a brief background of about yourself and which position are you stand into to into leadership thanks so much uh, my name is Trevor Derek, a uh, psychiatric clinic officer by profession. Uh, on my background, about in leadership, I've been a leader right away from my primary, whereby I was the head boy in P6, P7. Uh, then from senior two, I was the class counselor. Then senior three, I was the health prefect. Uh, senior five to senior six, I was the chairman science club that's Chambo college when i went to campus i was the finance minister uh previously i've been the chairperson of my village on youth committee then parish level i was the sports and culture uh, now currently i'm the candidate for nakawa youth councillor male uh, that's the a bit of my background. Now, introduction. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I am Mwezi Lawell. I am very glad to be here. Uh, this is not my first time. I have been a student leader at uh, Macquarie University uh, in various guild positions. I also work with NUP. Uh, the election management committee um i'm very glad to be here i hope uh, i'm looking forward to the discussion hello viewers simple you watching me is my name a teacher by profession and it's not my first time here on s class i've been coming on the panel to discuss a lot of issues so i'm looking forward to see what is up to come so if, if, you, if you're just joining us, we are discussing Liempo in leadership, then what we would like you to do is just drop in your comments or your question to anyone, any, any person on the panel. So this first, first question goes to, let me first of all ask Derek. You, you said you are want to come in as a youth leader in your parish. So what motivated you to come out? What, what was not happening before? Why were you not coming out? Let me in 2016. Why didn't you come out in 2016? Why, no, why now in 2020 then 2021? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as I've been, to, I've told you about my background. I've been a leader right away from P6. So me, with the leadership, it's like part of me. I take like almost every time I have to engage into leadership because I love serving. I when you sell my background, I've not been like in a position when I'm receiving any money because I've been on village level, then parish level. This time round, I wanted to go up to at least I go in the council. Mm. That's why, because like you say, why I wanted to go come as a youth councillor. One, you uh, when you're a councillor, you're the one who take uh, who takes the youth voice. You're like a youth voice voice in the council. Mm. You, you talk about what uh, matters concerning the youth about the, in the council. Mm. Previously, we have been having youth councillors, but you may find like most people, almost youth even don't know about it because most of them just go because they are uh, after money like i'm looking for a job yeah, they take it like that they don't take our ideas they don't come back to the ground to know what exactly we need as youth mm. yeah. once they are they are elected you will never see them back mm. so i wanted at least to go because i've been working with the youth for a long time because mm. even in the hospital you know yeah. i was working with you been with the youth so at least I know much about the youth. Mm. I want to take our ideas and our concerns in the council. We discuss them in the council. At least we get a voice in the council mm. about our matters. That's mainly what is taking me for that position. Okay. Then when it comes to Lawel, who you, you who is who say that you are into you, you are with the noob, then why, why why do you think very many young people are coming up right now to take in the leadership position in Uganda? Um, I think uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy to work with NUP mm -hmm. and we must recognize that, like you have said, there has been a shift in the youth participation in the, youth, uh, in the elections, not only the youth but also at national level. 
uh, whether MP position, uh, uh, mayorship, etc. We must recognize that there has been rise in the political consciousness. That before, uh, uh, years before, people never minded about the youth elections. Mm. Uh, that, but this time around, you saw the youth hugely turn up to participate in the youth elections. I don't want to appear like I'm attacking the regime, but there has been a tendency to uh, concentrate politics in the hands of the other generation that is ahead of us. And the youth for long have been uh, marginalized and have not been given priority. Mm. What we have had different this time is that we have had a candidate, whether we like him or not, who has uh, told the youth that, you know what, that this is your time, that it is possible that uh, people are the ones with the power, not the state itself, you know. Mm. Uh, we think such a message has, has, you know, created a belief within the youth that they can make it, that they matter. Um, uh, like I said, it is important that when we are quoting figures of the youth in Uganda, and you say, you know, 75% of the population in Uganda are yeah. the youth, mm. it is important that the youth directly participate in their fate. It would not be good representation for the biggest lot of people of a population not to take part in issues that concern them. Mm. And don't be deceived when they say that uh, politics is, is a dirty game, politics is for a particular class. No, politics is what determines the location of resources and everything. So the youth wherever they are should determine the location of resources and everything. So the youth wherever they are should should make it an obligation to take part in the politics to determine their future. After all, they are the biggest stakeholders and they have more time on earth. Mm. Uh, other factors remain in constant. So it is important that the youth continue to do what they are doing. But also, uh, my fear is the youth should not only participate uh, in uh, what are they going to do different. We have had cases where women members of parliament don't advocate for women's rights. They, they just go there and they're like any other MPs. So we think that if, if our colleagues like him can become youth councillors mm. with, with, with good intentions, they should know why they are there and they should perform for the youth. Let the numbers who are in, in those positions reflect a betterment in the situation of the youth around them. Because mm. it is not enough for us to have these youth there. Uh, before I, I, f I finish, I want to tell the youth, wherever they are, that uh, these positions are not going to be just given, that they need to fight for these positions. Politics, uh, is, is, is political power is not given, mm. it is taken, and uh, doesn't cut across only the presidential election. Cuts so across. So, so I'm, I'm telling the mm. youth to do all they can to occupy these positions, the people who are holding them. Are not are not going to just give them uh, on a on a silver platter. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when 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 it comes to Mr. Sempala Duachim, who is a teacher, so if you look at the the the, the, the leadership things today, when you look at the presidential level, don't you think like people have left the other kind of job that they are supposed to do, like either being teachers or starting up businesses? So they are looking at, at politics as a, a, a new job. Like if one is facing politics, they want to get those that new, because they see it's a cl it's a white collar job. You don't fight as long as you fight your s for yourself and go through. The rest is is gold and diamond. Definitely, you're right because mm. there is high rate of unemployment, and of recent we have been in a lockdown. You realize that the majority of people, especially the youth and those who are in other sectors who wish to come and contest. You mm. realize that they don't have fast paying jobs which will sustain them. So they are looking at politics as a profession now. So to their mind, when they look at those who are in power moving into a lavish lifestyle and they, co they, they are competing, they are not good at service delivery, but they are just consuming the little resources they get. So it becomes too competitive. Look at what has been in the previous youth elections. Mm. You realize that even the young ones investing money to themselves into those electoral colleges of theirs to, to bribe. Mm. So by bribing, it means you expect some payment mm. ahead of you. Mm. So people are looking at this game as no longer service delivery, but satisfying their own selves. At mm. times, you realize that because of unemployment and idleness, that's why they, now this regime is duplicating services. Mm. You realize youth chairman, 
10 councillors in, in, in a parish, there are more than 10 councillors. Who is to pay them? So you realize that at the end of the day, even them, they are yearning for a living. They need to go into the council at the end of the day to receive a, a payment, not to deliver services to the young ones as they quote them. They sugar quote their views that have come in to give you services. I'm ready to become your voice. I'm the voice of the voiceless. Yes, it will come in one year. But at the end of the term, you, when you assess them, many of them do not deliver to their best as they promised the electorates. So, so Mr. Delik, if you look at 20, 2016, when, when we were voting MPs, when we were voting other leaders in power, so we, we, are you, we are you really motivated? Or if you look at how our leaders have been from 2016 up to now, because we're going to vote new leaders, do you feel like our leaders have, have really tried their level best to make sure that every young person or every person, because our, trust me, everything that is in our country is determined by politics. The, the roads, the, the, the health care, everything, that's, that's some, education is done by politics. So do you feel like our politicians have done us well when it comes to service delivery to, to the communities? Thank you so much. Uh, now, when you say like uh, uh, service delivery, mm. uh, some of the reason why most youth now are joining politics, mm. let me go even to that, is because we feel there's a lot of things which have been left out. You find like as the youth, most of us are educated. Mm. And most people have been in power for some good time. Most of them are not educated. That's why like there's, so, there's a saying, some people think politics is for people who never went to school. You get Because like I, current, uh, re, uh, I personally, when I came into politics, most people were like, yeah, now you're a professional doctor. Why are you going into politics? Why are you wasting your profession? You get for them, they think you must have done nothing, you must just be someone who's just there to shout, to do what that's what they think. At the end of the day, you find that we get leaders who are incompetent, someone who cannot even reason in council, someone who goes in parliament and spends five years without even saying a word because they cannot express themselves in English. You understand? Call me now, I did public education that's. Oliver. We used to go to Parliament. We have over 400. No, just to observe and see how things move. Yes. But you find like there are people who, whom even the, uh, the speaker doesn't know. You have been there for four years, but the speaker even cannot, doesn't, okay, like, you know, when you're not known by anyone, you're like, yeah, you're from which constituents? They don't know for four years you have been in Parliament. You get many someone is there but cannot even say, has never even said the word. Yes. But now as the youth we come into politics to fill up the gaps. At least we have been leaders, we have been groomed. Eh? Now a person like me, if I've been a leader from primary, mm. the steps have gone through. I've been a youth leader on village level, parish level, we go on learning. Sorry, by slowly. You get, we see mistakes which have been done. Recently, in 2016, uh, you will find that most positions, you find someone uh, has been on a position for over three terms, mm. but they are still the same people coming up. Mm. They take it like they are the only wise people yeah. in the area. Mm. No one can change, oh, change them. them, yes. So we wanted to make a difference this time. Mm. We want to see things change. We want to feel at least we are also felt somewhere. Mm. Anything which we feel like it's not right, we want to make it right also. This is a new generation. Whereby our thoughts are different from uh, other people's thoughts. Mm. You find someone over 70 years, still, for them they still have the other thought, like how things used to move. Mm. But now things have changed. You get yeah. Uh You know, even like, you said service delivery, yes. Some things have been worked on, mm. but some have been left out. Mm. Because some people now, you know, they pre uh, they mind about themselves first, rather than the community. Mm. Yes. Mm. Me personally, have been a d I'm a doctor. Mm. I've been working with people. Mm. I've been in government hospitals. Mm. I see the uh, life people go through. 
have come not because I want money. Because at least I can receive enough. Mm, can More than what uh, I can receive in the council. Mm, mm. But at least I want to see people something change. Within my profession still, mm. uh, within because I have some NGOs I've been working with, but we go in the community, you say things are everything is not well. Mm. I just want to change some things according to what we have been seeing. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Yes, anyway, that's it. Okay. Mm. Then, when it comes to Lowell, uh, you say that you are coming from a, a political party which we are seeing that it's bringing up some kind of change in, like when it comes to to, to, to to leadership and also motivating young people. Is this a new trend, like young people are now motivated, we are supposed to take on, because before it wasn't like that. Us like young people, we have, we have been seated at the back, seeing like this race, political race is for old people, not us. Like let them die, let them kill themselves, let them abuse themselves. Because we used to see them on TV, but now you see a person of around 21 years dead on the panel of, with with somebody who is 50 years and they are still they, they are still discussing issues so the, the young people if you are saying this is a, a new generation people should sit down and we also take charge of our country so when you look at you as a person who is into electro side of of nope how how do you think that this country is going to move from from where it is up to where we want i i do think you guys are taking us anywhere or we are going to stay in the same state uh Okay, I, I belong to a particular grouping called the Now Generation. And and the friends with whom I sit, we, there's something we share in common and that we always discuss. Mm. That as the youth, we need to take charge of this nation. But we also need to take this nation to the right direction and it should be based on merit and understanding of where we want to go. That we should give reason for people to get involved, to have a medical doctor like him who is very comfortable, leave his comfort to take charge of his country. It is very amazing, but it is something that should have been done before because, you know, people should take charge of politics because that's, that's the first sign of, of love for one's nation and they need to better it. You know, if you're in charge of the politics, you can, you, you can, you can plan for the health system. Uh, the former uh, president of Association of Medical Doctors was talking about, is it medical politics, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you ask a very pertinent question. Does this mark a beginning of a new era where the youth take charge? Uh, I think yes. I think yes because there is always no turning back because I don't think they are in this by mistake or for sure or as an event. It is because they realize that they need to take charge of this nation. What perhaps uh, Bobby Wine could have done is arouse their consciousness. They need to, but they have seen and they know what they want. Uh, when you see a medical doctor here, he's a representation of very many more people who believe there is change, just that there are few who are willing to take the risks. But at least that, that's, that's the starting point. I think that is very uh, important. I think this is a beginning of a new era. But I think we also need to take into consideration our context as Uganda. You see, there is a stretch of, a, of an age group between those who are 60 and those who are 30. Mm. So you realize there is, there is a generation between 30 and 50, which is more or less a wasted generation. Because that generation agreed to sit back and not take charge of events. They were hoodwinked that the government which came into power when they were still young was, was going to do everything without them being involved. People should not be lied. There is, there is a common saying that there is nothing for us without us. Mm -hmm. If you're not involved, you, 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 you're not involved. The people cannot, cannot say they are going to sideline you from offices, occupying space, and still help you out. That is why we have a group which is wasted, and now they are trying to encroach, on and now they are trying to encroach on, on, on this now generation. You, you, you've seen uh, from a cross-board opposition and, and government, those who are in opposition, they don't want to leave to create space. Like I was saying, uh, political space is, is taken, not given. But y as you can see, they have realized their time has gone. There is a younger generation which is pushing and, and they also want to encroach on it. I think it is very important for the, for the generations before us to understand that the new trend is going to be sustained and it is built on beliefs. We are not here for sure. Um, they have been comfortable seeing us following Arsenal and going for music festivals. Mm. Uh, you know, but now we are in for the politics. 
they, they should be prepared to create space because if they don't, we shall force them out. Uh, but what I want to emphasize most and tell my fellow youth, and I will re echo this, that it is important that we don't repeat the mistakes of those before us, that we cannot continue with the politics of being comfortable in offices, of, 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 of corruption and bribery, because like he has told you, there is a general feeling that politics is just uh, a space for eating, mm. uh, for self-interest. Uh, I think the youth need to change that if they also want to be youthful. Uh, we, we must have people, uh, teachers who are, who are proud to tell their students uh, to join politics because they, they will control the, the future of the education system. We should have medical doctors who will tell their kids or their patients that it is okay to be a politician as long as you have good intentions. It is okay. Uh, because this country needs to be changed, and it's going to be changed by the young population. Also, people should stop quoting figures of we are 75 percent of the total Ugandan population. Mm. Use it to get political mileage. Yet, in real sense, they don't want to give the 75 percent chance to occupy office. Mm. You get. I belong to a school of thought that where you have a youthful person who has quivered a moon. Uh, and he has stood, that particular person should be given preference ahead of, of uh, an opposition politician who has been in parliament for 10 years because we need to walk the talk. We, if we say we are giving the youth chance, let it also be seen in actions. You get. So that is what I believe in. And to answer your question uh, direct, I think the youth have woken up and they're going to fight till the end. We just need to caution them to stand for the right to not take away uh, hope of the population mm -hmm. that politics is for the corrupt, for, the s for those who are seeking to benefit themselves. Uh, lastly, I also want to urge people like him and, and these who are in professions mm -hmm. to tell, to, you know, to, to get involved in the politics. The elite of this country have chosen to forsake the politics, and that is why we are suffering. Um, I don't think that we should continue to vote MPs because of how many live have likes and Facebook views they have, but by the content of, of, their, of their brains and their professions, dedication. A person who chooses to be a journalist selling a story at 5,000 or even a teacher who wants 20,000, that is total love for a country. They would have chosen to go fishing or doing something which gets quick money. You get, I think those are people who should be given chance and those are the well-intentioned. Okay. Do you think the old people will give you space for you guys to well. No, no, I don't think. Mm. That's why I believe the old people must be forced out. The, the youth need to occupy space and they need to understand that they need it. Mm. They need to get involved, they need to stand, that's the first thing, and they need to vote in huge numbers and they need to preach the right message. Okay. Yes. The, when, when it comes to Mr. Sempala Joachim, do you think youth are going to be given a, 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 a political space for them to just come in and, and, and occupy the space, they do whatever they want, or it's going to be a race for two people, the old and the, 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 the young? Definitely it is a race between two people because nobody wishes to be pushed out of where he is benefiting a lot. There is a lot of pressure between the state and a political party. W and within some political parties, some people have made, made sure that their space is filled up by their children. Can you imagine that you are a father who is leaving the, po the, the position, but you're leaving there your little daughter to take over? So you realize that there's a lot of compressing other people's ideas. So the youth have to use a lot of force. Meanwhile, also sensitizing their fellow youth to come in huge numbers, he has said, to push the older ones out of office because it's their time. Time has to, you see with age, every generation has its time. So this is their generation. It's a generation whereby you have to admit you need somebody who thinks like you, not somebody who may dish away your ideas. He's a medical doctor. Take a case study of what we are facing right now. There is a huge challenge. When you look at the disease which is affecting Ugandans, you ask yourself, youth have come on board. When you go online, they come up with ideas. You mean Uganda knew that COVID will come in March? They prepared way back. They would have prepared way back because by January and February, they could have known that this thing is coming.
take case studies like countries like New Zealand, Austria, Australia, they knew that this disease is coming. They prepared. But what happened to the older ones of ours? When people submitted their views and gave them resolutions how best they could handle the, the situation, they dished them down in the dustbin. That's why we are now engaging in a lot of challenges. People are suffering without service delivery. I've talked about people who have stayed in office for 20 years and they will come back. Unfortunately, when you look at the massacre region where NUPA has given back people who have been in parliament again for 10 years, why do you give them chance? Have they delivered to the best? You give it to any other person at least to deliver so that there is some shift change. Because these older ones, there are not many. If you quote the figure, 75%. In fact, it's almost one point something space which is left for people to occupy. Let the 75 at least take a minute and the rest be for these other older ones. At least life will change. Service will be delivered. But if they may not get it on a silver plate, they have to, as was here said. And the good thing, Lowell has come up with an idea. They should know why they are standing. That why question is very important. Because if they have come in the name of changing the society, let them change themselves and let them live an exemplary life whereby everybody is admiring them. Even the older ones, whom they think they have done something which might not be good, let them also accept and say for sure they are, we are changing for the best, but not diminishing their potential. However much they have wronged as human beings, but they are not saints. Let them at least admit that there is room for change. Let us give power to these little ones and we guide them. Gone are the days whereby we have a conscious age which is there to advise. Okay? The, even the political parties which have been in existence, they have ignored the youth. That's why they feel like NUP is our place to be. Let us go there where we understand ideas. But you will ask yourself, you mean other political parties don't have youthful uh, people who are ready to take space? So if they are denied option, the, uh, a position, they will seek for other ways of gaining it, either through contesting or through force. Because you, you expect that those things will happen. And if change has come, it's a fact of life. Whether they want it or not, it's time for change if it has knocked in. Hmm. Yes, m Mr. Derek, you who is, a, who is a medical doctor, if you look at Uganda today and if you look at the way young people want to come out and take different things that they want to do in this country. If, if, you, are, if you who is who is coming right now, who wants to come in, if, if you are given a, a board and these people have trusted you in power, do you, is there anything that you are going to do? If, 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 the, if the head is not changed, then you who is down, it's going to be a little bit hard for you to deliver the services that the way people want to deliver them. So do you feel like there is something new that you guys are going to do? The you, the new generation, because I feel like they, 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 everything starts from the top to, to come down. So if the top is not changed and the top remains the same, the, by the time it, it's going to be the other side of you guys who are down on, 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 on the grassroots. It's going to be hard for you guys to deliver this. This is the thing that I always ask these young people. What is new that you're going to put on the table? What is new that people are going to look at you for? Okay, thank you so much. Um, According to me, yeah. I believe government is not is not one person. Mm. Government is me and you. Yeah. Everything starts with me and you. Mm. The president won't come down to grass uh, grassroots to understand what is taking place down here. Mm. It's us to create awareness. awareness. Mm. It all starts with us. Mm. If me and my youth, mm. the committees, we start up something. We can change and make things the way we want it to be. What I know about the president, it's not like the president is the one who has issues. Most cases are the people who are around him. Mm. You may find he also runs out of ideas. But if we put up something and we present to him that this is what we need as the youth, and this is the way we want things to move. Mm. I know, at least a chance can be given to us. 
okay let's try it out and see so for me i think when i go through as the youth counselor because i don't work alone i work with a committee of people i have my ideas as a person i know my other fellow youth have ideas we sit down we see what to do what do we need to be changed because even if we change government but when the downer branches are still the same nothing will change so need what need to be changed the downer part or the upper part according to your observation according to me mm. i think we start with right away from the leaders who are on ground mm. the locs uh loc ferries mm. eh? mm. cuz these are the people who are directly in touch with the community because for, for the few locs mm. i interacted with they are always saying uh, like we go to the council we give them our ideas but mm. nothing is being implemented they just take the ideas they take the proposals they appreciate mm. but they don't do anything for us so if if if, if we don't if if, if if they don't deliver what they are supposed to deliver they always complain they keep complaining that things are not moving because of the leadership up, up, upstairs mm. so if, if if we don't if we, i i have a feeling like we, we shouldn't blame the, the downer part we should try to focus the up on the middle part and the last part of the on, on, the, on the on the up, up on the up on the up on the tree uh yes i know it all moves within the system yeah, just look at the tree you have yes the you have the, the stem then you have the upper part where you get the fruits to my understanding what mm. i know mm. if we really need change mm. then the whole system has to change do you believe in changing the entire system or you believe in changing part by parts because if we are change part by part by part by parts we are going to finish up in 2026 uh if we say part in uh, part by part okay uh, what i've told you at first mm. if the downer system is changed mm. first yes. mm. we built up something we need mm. eh you get remember even though we are to lobby we don't only lobby from the government Definitely. Do you understand so if we put us something we need because we know what the community needs we can even lobby out of the government you understand but if government sees what we are doing is also great i know they can be part of it Mm. Yeah, we Mr. Lawila had to go and do something. Yeah, he had some other engagement. Mm. So Mr. Jisempala Jowachim, if you look at the way our country is right now, we have youth who are fighting for power right now. You, uh, when you are there, you talked about you talked about no. We have FDC, we have NRM, we have GM, we have different parties. All these parties want to come in power. If, uh, why don't they all these parties come come up with one thing? Because they're all serving one person. That's a Ugandan. Are, are they really are they really having Uganda you the, the word Uganda in their heart or they just want to go they just want to go there and fight for their own for good and my stomach yeah to me for sure when you are asking my brother how best can we change this system mm. something came into my mind I realized that a fish starts to rot from the head so if the system up is not delivering the best mm. so the message has to come from the top mm. we have been in the situation whereby everybody was anxious waiting for the president to say something so people if they they have the ear, their ears are on the ground and it's like the president has to say something mm. so people still respect the system that if the president says something we can as well as adopt to that so the point is yes with all the political parties we have, many of them, let us first ask ourselves, however much they have come into the system, they are promising heavens on earth, but are they, is there democracy within themselves? Do they respect each other's ideas? Mm. You hear people flexing, somebody is fighting or recent, somebody got a, a rifle and shot to some other members competing in the same party. Mm. Then something should be done. We should learn to respect each other's view. We should forward first and foremost. Let us not move into political parties. Let us not move into ethical issues. Let us focus, as you've said, as a Ugandan. Mm. 
if our motto is for God and my country, let us put the country at stake first before we think of other things. Because at the end of the day, is a Ugandan who is suffering. Mm. If we are to lobe, we are going to lobe as Ugandans. We shall not lobe as a certain political party, a certain. Party. So we lobe as a country. And at the end of the day, if we are given, let us do the best for uh, for for others or for the, our country. So with that, you realize that for sure, these political parties. I, for one, I feel like there is something which is missing. Mm. Youth. As you say, they have been left out for at least some time. Mm. But I, again, at, for us, because you, I will admit that the education sector has given them a platform whereby youth are contesting and they are respecting each other, then if after that, let us try to nurture them into this political space. Mm. And we, begi we start uh, going at the days where we, we have, uh, we call them youth brigades. Mm. Let us respect them. Let us give them opportunity to take charge of different sectors, different committees, as you, the elders are supervising them. Mm. Then at the end of the day, the system will drastically start changing slowly by slowly, mm. and we shall see that at heart people feel like Uganda is the best now. The spirit of patriotism, mm. which they are preaching always, let us be seen realistically. So now, Mr. Simple, I'm going to take you back. Mm. When you look at all the leaders that we had in the, from 2016 up to now, mm. as, as, as the community, you guys who are voting for them, have you ever sat down to start evaluating what this leader has done for the community? Because we, we, when you look at, let me say, LC2, LC3, LC1, mm. you sit down and start evaluating because these guys also want to come back into power because they feel like this is a job now. They mm. have nothing else to do apart from being there in mm. council to represent us. Have you, as the community itself, sat down to evaluate that Mr. Simpala Jawachim has been there as our LC3 or LC4 mm. or LC5 leader? So it's high time before we tell you to you, we vote you back in power. We need to evaluate you and see have you done anything for the five years you have been in power? Have you done anything? Have, uh, have we really appreciated your work? Have we really liked what you have been brought back home and chill? Mm. So has the community itself done its level best to evaluate these leaders? First and foremost, we are living the, in a situation whereby there is, there is political immaturity amongst the, the population. Mm. You look at the majority of the leaders who come on board. Do they have manifestos? Do they think about people's problems first? Because how many of them come into the, the public and distribute their manifestos? Or they sit down with, the, with, with a committee of members or they visit a few of them to seek for their problems and come up with solutions. Mm. Many of them do not come on, on to the grassroots to see what is happening. Mm. And you realize that those who come do, do not g give the best. There's no time to, to, in fact, to convince others. How many of us in our communities do we have public debates where we, we caution all these leaders to come on board and we tell them, you present what you're going to serve us. Mm. You tell us, you campaign. Mm. Because what we call the campaign is meeting door-to-door -door people, discussing with them, organizing a football match, a charity, mm. giving, distributing. That is no sense. Mm. People need you people to come on ground, sit down, organize like, this platform. You call upon members, leaders to come and dish and debate. Mm. We have seen several debates in, in those countries. Yeah. And of recent, uh, the first debate was in Uganda. We saw what the president could deliver. Some of them could not even speak. Mm. So you stand to defend your opinion. Mm. We stand to, we are, we are ready to assess you. Mm. But now, what should we base on to assess them? They never brought to us manifestos. Mm. They just, some of them, they were caught on surprise. You remember the Kisumuruzo saga. Mm. They were caught on surprise. I was told one of our LC5 counselor the woman was even sleeping mm. she realized somebody called her that now you've passed it through she was even surprised mm. so some some people vote out of i don't know we but don't care who to vo whom exactly. we are voting we they elect. don't think of tomorrow okay. that is the problem mm. they think of what is there today mm. even right now you find many of them you the the contender to come I'm, I'm aspiring for this i've come then it's like what have you brought on board mm. you have some money so it's like give me money and i receive of recent i was reading i remember it was some friend of mine sent me something on whatsapp and he showed me 
poster of uh, Honorable Robert Mao in 1996 when he was contesting for MP Guru Municipality. Yeah, it was in black and white. Comparing it with Semujung and his billboard. Mm -hmm. And he was asking me, is the politics now for service delivery or for the rich? Somebody ha is having a billboard. Mm -hmm. This one had a black and white poster. Mm -hmm. So you look at the cost now. It's not generation, but way back maybe politics was referred to as service steady by there was no more, more lavish things. But now you have to invest a lot of money, hoping that you will receive. So that is the challenge. There's no even, we don't have a measuring scale to judge them. Mm. They just go in, they invest, they say, okay, let me get some money. I invest into these people for some time, and within five years, I'll get back my money. For sure. mm. So if you're just joining us, we are live on this class member discuss, we're discussing issues that affect adolescents. And we looked at it that, that politics is one thing that is, is, is the major thing in everything. So whether service delivery when it comes to health, health whether service delivery when it comes to load construction, like in everything, politics is supposed to be is involved. So in, in, in Uganda here, 2021, we are going to be voting. Uh, the MPs, the president, and also other leaders in power. Very many leaders are coming out to ask for their for votes from communities and everyone. So we're trying to ask, what, what is it, what is wrong? Why are young people now involved themselves into politics? Then when it comes to Mr. Delic, mm. you say that we are voting, we, 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 Mr. Stepan said that we're just voting. And I heard you recently said, you, we have people who speak, who don't even go, go even discuss anything on the floor of parliament. We, we just, they're just like corridor MPs. We now, that's what they call them. These are corridor MPs. They just come and discuss in corridors. They wait for news anchors to, to give the microphone, then they talk to yeah. speak on the floor of parliament or out what yeah. issues are affecting people in, back in their in, the, in their in their community or the villages yeah. so if you look at uganda today our parliament discusses in english mm. so the, the the qualification for our people to to either become mps is the senior six mm. don't you feel like very because it, it's it's automatic if you went through senior six doesn't mean that you know english there are those who say like, i i passed senior six but they can't even express themselves. So don't you feel like this is a, a very big problem to our country? They would have discussed in our local language. A person from Acholi discussing in Acholi, like this, they have an interpreter. Or they bring those things that interprets. Mm. Then if you, a person is from Alua or from, from any part of the country discusses in his own her, the language that he or she feels like comfortable with. Mm. So what is your take about uh, when, what's your take about it when people just discuss in English, nothing else, like, and no any other language apart from English? Thank you so much. Um, I think I almost brought out the idea because also me, what are we thinking? Mm. If they can get translators mm. and someone talks in a language where they feel comfortable, because mm. someone may have a good idea, but in actual sense they cannot express it out in English, because mm. that's the biggest challenge now we face. You find like someone, as you said, in Parliament they have been silent. But when they get out, they speak out good ideas, mm -hmm. which would have been spoken out during the, the discussion. discussion. Yes. So, to me, I believe that would be uh, that have been better, mm -hmm. as we see now in the United. Uh, it's called the Six. United uh, Nations. Eh? Mm -hmm. United Nations. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Every can't everyone discusses in different mm -hmm. language, yeah. but it's translated Some so that everyone gets to understand, understand what is bringing out. Mm -hmm. I feel even here it would have been better. Mm. Like for example, we say uh, in schools, mm. you find like someone is bright, mm. but they cannot write something in English to bring out what exactly they want to mean. Because mm. mm. we used to face it in primary. You find someone can sp uh, speak something very well, mm. but tell them write it on paper. It down. They can't. Mm. They will call him, please help me here. Mm. But when it's oral, mm. They can do something very well. Mm. So even here now, you find like someone has a good idea, but maybe he can express it in Luganda, in Acholi, mm. in what? Mm. But when it comes to English, it's a tag of war. Mm. You'll find her uh, like here, most of our schools here. Because mm. now I always say I was at Chambo College. Mm. You know at Chambo, we take mostly where it's Baganda school. Mm. You understand? Because I remember one day when I went to the staff room, I was like, I was taking in English, you know, teacher, I wonder, they were like, are you Uganda or what? I said, I'm Uganda. Then, why can't you talk in Uganda? Yeah, just eh? Then wasting your, uh, your time in English, English. Mm. We know that you are understanding it because by the time you reach senior six or senior five, mm. we know you, you know English. 
but now just feel free talk in your language you understand yeah. better mm. said okay so we used to feel free talking in Luganda at Luganda. school <laughs> you understand mm. so the same comes back here at least if they give them a chance to express themselves mm. in their local languages to be, have been better now even in our councils here you will find that there is no qualification needed mm. for one to be an AOC theory counselor so I think it will also be better if they ex uh, they always discuss in a language they all understand better. Mm. It would have been better. Mm. That's what I think. Okay. That's my take. Uh, mm. When it comes to Mr. Sempala, you who is mm. a teacher, mm. Mm. you teach our brothers and sisters in English. Mm. Do you think English is the only language that should be used in parliament or any other, in any other discussion, even in the other division? Yeah, according when you look at the Ugandan system, mm. we are colonized by the British, mm. and for time, for some time back, people have been hustling for national language. We don't have an, a national language. Mm. Uganda doesn't have a national language, unlike our counterparts, the Kenyans and the Tanzanians, who use Kiswahili as their national language, mm. a language which is binding them together. Uh, even us Ugandans would have gotten one, at least which could have been an, as a substitute for for English. Officially, we all know that English is the official language. All documentation have to be in English in Uganda. So even swearing in, even discussing issues at national level, we have to use English as a must because you have no option. I would have liked that at least for some time, these people should sit down and make added amendments whereby at least we recognize one local language mm. or we plan for a language which can suit all of us that we can express ourselves or our leaders should feel free to express themselves mm. because you realize that countries like china mm. chinese is a national language and they speak in chinese mm. but they have also their tri tribal different languages mm. but they will use chinese even the germans will use german but again within the germans they have different what so how I wish we would have gotten at least a national language which could help us, but also that for this generation we find like we are missing out something. Because if people cannot express themselves in English at a level of a member of parliament, then ask yourself if they go into or abroad where they will meet these people and the only language they have to use is English. Will they be able to air out our views, to lobby for their constituencies? Mm. On top of that, however much we look at them, you have talked, you have said these are corridor MPs. Some of them do not know even the rule of procedures. They enter into something just out of excitement, mm. so they cannot submit their views. Because some of them are even shuttered down by the rules of procedures. And mm. somebody is like, I cannot express that. They will end up discussing their issues in the corridors mm. where they know that so and so is a media of NBS. I'll speak in Uganda. I'll air out my views. They will be able to listen. And majority of my people are watching me, mm. not in the parliament where they are not w watching me, mm. submitting my views. Mm. So also that is there. On top, it's not all about even issuing, submitting in your views, but also taking a stake of what you get to delivering at least to your people mm. in, uh, and at the grassroots. Look at, you've, talking, you've spoken about people who are from Arua. Somebody who's voted from Arua, you find out that he stays in Intinda. How often does he go to Arua to hear issues about the people there? Mm. So also that is also alarming. They vote them into office. The next month, they are in Kampala relaxing. Mm. The only time they have to go back is when there is a national function and all that. So there is a lot of things which are missing out. Okay. Mm. So Mr. Delic, what is your take about uh, how COVID has affected politics in our country? Do you think it has affected it in a way or what is your take about that? Is it positive in a positive or in a negative way? Okay. So, uh, thank, uh, okay. Uh, my take on that mm. COVID has affected our politics mainly negatively. Mm. How? Because I personally have been in primaries and I am primaries. Mm. Now you find like since most people are not working, so they all believe now a candidate, any candidate who comes is now their source of income. income. Mm. 
someone will always call you i don't have something to eat i don't have this my children are sick my this and that you get you find out that most of the time you're going to have a big burden now for me I, i'm a youth i'm just 28 years yeah. but now i've been having an expenditure of not less than a hundred thousand per day spending it on the community just mm. every time you receive calls you receive calls you receive calls we even like when we reached one when we had primaries uh, i think last week you know what happened we reached there people were like if someone doesn't give me a 200,000 i won't vote mm. so it means someone who has more money is the one to yeah, go through to go to you will find like now currently most of the flag bearers for nrm we have mm. they have not gone through because they are the best candidates mm. no most of them have gone through because they had more money than others that's the biggest effect now we have. Mm. At the end of the day, what will happen? We shall find that we are going to get leaders who won't deliver. Mm. They'll be like, no, I spent a lot of money in doing primaries. I got a lot of loans. I have to pay back these loans. Mm. So they will take all the years paying back their loans. Mm. At the end of the day, they won't come back to the community. Mm. They'll be only hiding. How do you know the leader who is going to serve you before voting? Uh, according to me, I believe a good leader is someone, one, who has been groomed, mentored. Mm. You have gone through some steps of leadership. Mm. Like I told you, someone who has been the leader right away from your education system, mm. they have been grooming you. When you come out, at least you have been the structures, youth structures, you know how it moves. Because in youth structures, you don't receive a, even a single coin or any allowance, mm. but you just serve. Eh? It's just a love for serving. Mm. You understand? Mm. But someone who just comes out of the blue, you come that I want to be the MP, I want to be this, because you know the salary. Mm. It means you don't after serving, but you after acquiring a job. Mm. You know, hey, someone just became an MP. Within just five years, someone has become a millionaire. Mm. Now you feel like you also want to uh, go for MP position. Mm. Not because you want to serve. Because most of them go for a position, but even they don't know what they are going to do. What that uh, post? What the responsibilities of that post? Mm. Eh? Mm. You find someone ask them now. You want to be the counselor, or you want to be this? What does the counselor do? They don't know. Okay. They're totally green about the position. Mm. You understand? Mm. But just because they want something, money. Mm. I want to go get this. Then I also buy a car. I get this. I get that. Mm. At the end of the day, they will never come back. Because most cases, some most of them get even disappointed. Mm. You find someone like I had someone used a billion mm. shilling mm. in in just campaigns, primaries. Imagine, mm. but it's not even the final. By the end of the day, by the time the, he or she enters parliament, mm. how much will he have spent? Because if in pri uh, only the primaries you have spent a billion shilling, mm. eh? at the end of the day you reach parliament. I don't think if a billion you can get it back fr or from just the side they will be receiving. Definitely, they get some other things to do. Meaning they will just run away and not even uh, don't come back mm. to the people. Because they will be so disappointed. Eh? What they expect is not what they are seeing. Mm. I remember uh, people will still be calling you. Hey, honorable, honorable this, honorable my son is gay, honorable have lost someone, honorable that, that, that. Mm. They will just switch off their phones and run away. But if at least we went back to the traditional kind of leadership, mm -hmm. the traditional kind of campaigns whereby someone used to come, mm -hmm. used to vote someone on because he has given us money, mm -hmm. but yes, you give someone out of love. Mm -hmm. You give someone according to what that someone has been doing on ground. Mm -hmm. You remember like uh, in ancient communities, mm -hmm. someone became a chief. Uh, mm -hmm. Not just because is the uh, person who can talk well or what? But out of experience, mm. out of what you have, what have you done for the community so far? Mm. Eh? You find like someone at least who has the biggest farm on within the community, yes. at least is employing most of the people. You understand? Mm. Mm. Eh? Someone has been doing something, at least helping the needy, doing what? Mm. Eh? He'll be given that title, the chief of the community. Mm. You understand? At least out of what you have done. But here, one comes out of the blue. Even you don't know him in the community. Just came from nowhere. But because he has money, ah, he says now every each vote I'm buying it fifty thousand. You say all oh, people, 
go in his line. Cross over to his side. Yes. So, so Mr. Simple, as you watch him as you're winding up, what, what are some of the things that you would like to see in 2021 election? 2021 elections, I would have wished to see something which is better than ever before because I've seen a number of youth engaging into the ele elections mm. and they have shown some pressure and they have precious ideas and they are ready to serve. How I wish that they, they are given opportunity also to own something within the system mm. and we how best they can deliver. Mm. Then the other thing is that yes, we should vote right wisely mm. because an intelligent person for sure, it's not like I'm attacking the system, but an intelligent person who thinks that he has to reform or he needs change in society, he would have thought of some a shift change in the system, or especially on the way they are managing things, on the way they are doing their issues. There's a lot which is miss, missed out and bring us ideas are being left dished in the dustbin and these are in the comfort zone. They feel like they're only people to plan for the country. So that is it. Then you asked about the issue of the effect mm. of COVID-19. COVID-19 has, has made people think of taking up positions in politics. Since the majority of the population, they are idle, the only activity which they should involve in mm. is politicking. That's why we are seeing, like in my area, only just OC3 in a, a two zones only, there are about four, 15 people, a number which has never existed before. Mm. So people are saying that the only way to get money, to reform my, or to change, mm. is going into politics. politics. Mm. And they should and get to know, as my colleague has said, the re, their responsibility, the task ahead of them, mm. not just going into the system, and at one point they will hide that way, because a billion being invested into primaries uh, is too much. Mm. So it means that majority of the people are desperate, are desperate. Ne needing resources. In fact, you become now, you are the problem sort of. Definitely. Mm. Because when you become a leader in, your, in our country, you are you a leader even in somebody's home. You, you, service, you are supposed to deliver service up to somebody's home. Somebody will call you that, like Derek said, mm. only the period that he has been contesting for, for the position, very many people are asking for him support us this, support us in, in the other way. So Mr. Derek, as you're winding up, what are some of the things that you, you wouldn't like to see in the 2021 election? The ones you wouldn't want to see happening? Um, thank you so much. Some of the things I wouldn't will want to see in 2021. Mm. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't like to see people voting someone out of excitement like we did in 2026, mm. 2016, sorry. Mm. Most people just came and they were like, me, I'm just voting a key. No matter who is on, I don't want to know. Mm. Uh, even right now, you can ask some of the people, who's your Lord Councillor? Mm. Do you know him? Oh, uh, Lord, uh, the lady? Okay. I don't, maybe I don't know. <laughs> That's it. Because people are just voting just a key. Mm. Eh? I remember I asked even one person there that day. I was the presiding officer in my area. Mm -hmm. Well, like, now you have voted. Do you know, but do you know the people you have voted? No, I mean, I don't want to know. Pro even if it's a Jerican, I don't want to know. Me, yeah, I just need change. So I'll just vote whatever. It's on the key. Mm -hmm. um, we find that in these five years, they have just been wasted. Because we voted for people whom even we don't know where they stay. We don't... in a, in a tax, we have even never seen since elections ended. Mm. I want at least this time to see that people vote for someone they know. Mm. You vote for someone with a re reason, but not just because of the wave. Because, mm. yes, right now we have a wave of people power, no. Mm. But when you go through the list, it's not that no, or everyone they have brought is the best candidate. But you will find some people who are just voting. Everywhere I say an umbrella, I just vote. Mm. You can understand. By the end of the day, we shall go back to what we have been in. Do you think 2021 we are going to have what we, call, what we had in 2016, which was called the, the Sumuluzo effect? So in 2021 we are going to have what we call the umbrella effect. 
uh, to my research, to some people who have gone to school who understand, we will first analyze something. Just look at our country, the way we vote. It will be in some areas, but not everywhere, especially in Kampala. I don't think in Kampala this time we are going to have that. Okay. Mr. Sempala, do you think we are going to have the Sumulzo, Sumulzo effect that we had in 2016 to a key to umbrella effect in 2021? It will depend on the results because what I know, history repeats itself. Mm. Most of these people are pushed out by the crowd. Mm. So you realize that however much we think of, there's a lot of political consciousness nowadays. People know, people are analyzing because of what they passed through mm. in the last five years, they may at least be alert this time around. However much one may lose, but the Tsumuzo effect may come but at least uh, impact yes to the viewers i call upon you to be consciously take somebody whom you know has been in the system serving you people not out of excitement as my colleague has said thank you very much uh, First of all, I thank you for give it, uh, taking your time and listening to us. Thank you so much. But I pray you vote wisely. Don't just do something out of excitement. Don't just do something because someone has given you money. At least first think twice. Thank you. Then to, to, for you to the viewers, they, you need to assess your leaders, not to just, the person just comes in back and tell you, please give me again your vote. Like how has he or she been doing for the last five years? He has been in power leading. Remember that whatever that you do or the whom, whoever you vote today in power, is the, it determines what your host is going to be, what your, your loads are going to be, because they're the ones who are supposed to push your views back to, to the parliament or to the discussion rooms. So not to have a leader who is just going to come and, and get the money, then goes back and chills in Muyenga or anywhere else. And if the people that he's standing in for are the people of Kalungu or anywhere else. So you need to vote wisely. Think before you vote that whoever you want to vote, first of all, assess the person. What is or she going to do for us? What is or she going to do for me? W do, you need, do you want to see the change that you want? This change that you want to see, you are the one who is, who is going to put it there in your country or in your area. Don't just cast your voice your vote and, and, and waste it focus stay focused stay focused in whatever that you do change we true we need change the main things you need to change and also our elderly leaders we, this, this is a new generation give just let us just test us it's like eight months paper test us for the five years if we fail you come back so thank you so so much those who have been watching online please you can still drop in your comments give us your vote. <laughs> Hello, my name is Wamboga Teridon. I'm happy to introduce Sexual Reproductive Health Services. With the centers for Alta, police stations, legal aid, counseling, toll-free helplines, health facility two hours, treatment of STDs and other injuries, among others. Tap on the categories option to the center. Centers for Her is an app that women support services including sexual reproductive health services with the centers for her app girls and women can now access free fast and control free helplines health facilities and services like HIV and AIDS post exposure prophylaxis emergency family planning pills if reported within 72 hours treatment of STDs and other injuries among others centers for her app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store to access any of the services, for example, police stations, tap on the categories option, choose police, select a station closest to your location. This will be represented by a black pin. You will then get directions to the center. Centers for Her is an app that women, girls, community leaders, and service providers can all use to refer survivors of violence to different service points. <laughs>